Back in 2010, mm. Microsoft was already warning about the addictive nature of smartphones. More than a decade later, things seem to have hit critical mass, leading some to make changes in their lives. Among them is Kashmir Hill, a features writer on the business desk at the New York Times, who ditched her iPhone for a flip phone in the month of December and loved the reset it provided. And Kashmir joins us now. She covers technology and privacy issues for the Times. So I should tell you that Joe does this. He texts his kids and he goes, dad on flip all day. And only his kids can reach him. And then I field all of his calls on my smartphone. So it solves problems. So he has a flip phone too? Joe is a flip phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, really? nobody has yeah. the number. Wow. Well, but well, I mean, but, you know, nice. it's it's not Cashmere as you as you so well. write. This this will well, of course, it helps that they then call Mika. But you did say something that it, it's it's important not just because it narrows it down to my kids and a few other people, but it's also important for all the reasons you write about in this article. You, you aren't looking at your phone every 14 seconds. It does reset you. You're better in all parts of your life. But I, I, I talk about how important this is, but there is one thing you say that is so true that even when we try our best, the world that we live in requires us at times to go back to it. Like it is, it is... It is hard to go to a flip phone when the rest of the world is on a smartphone. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just so nice to unplug my brain from the internet for these long periods of time, because that's the thing about smartphones is it just gives us access to everything. And I think that's what makes it so addictive. Um, at the same time, we live in a very smartphone centric world now. So there were things I couldn't do, like I have an electric car and I went to pull in to charge it and realized I can't log into this charger without a smartphone app. Um, two factor authentication a lot of sites and services we use, including the New York Times, where I had to write this article to sign in. I needed to provide a code from an authentic authentication app on my smartphone. So I actually had to cheat to write this article. So, wow. so Kashmir, talk about a little bit about the process of decompression and kind of getting over the addiction. How hard was it? Did you go through a kind of FOMO period and how long did that last? And, and were there any particular apps that you missed? I mean, apart from those technical ones, you know, logistical ones. Yeah, I mean, actually a surprise to me was that there wasn't a lot that I missed about my phone. Um, I would say there was a two week period where, you know, I would go to the elevators at the New York Times office and just everybody as you're waiting for the elevator gets their phone out and starts looking at it. And I would have this kind of physical urge to rub my thumb along the phone. Uh, I call it my thumb twitch. And it took about two weeks for that to go away where in, in kind of moments of boredom, moments where my mind was wandering, I didn't have the urge to check my phone. Um, so that was, uh, that was a thing that surprised me how quickly that happened. And then um, my sleeping really improved over the wow. course of the month. I wake up a lot in the middle of the night. I'll try to fall back asleep and then I'll reach for my iPhone and I'll be up for an hour, two hours, three hours, you know, reading articles, doing Christmas shopping in December. And when I switch to the flip phone, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I just fall back to sleep after a few minutes. And so it made me realize how, um, how harmful this has been for my sleep to have the iPhone by the bed. Okay, but now you have the iPhone back, Kashmir, or are you still with the flip? I am still on my flip phone. I Jeez. can switch back, and I haven't wanted to yet. Okay, I like it. I think this is fa okay. fabulous. Okay. The New York Times features writer, Kashmir Hill, thank you so much. Her book entitled, Your Face Belongs to Us, A Secretive Startup's Quest to End Privacy as We Know It, is available now. We need to talk about that as well. But